Hey everyone, so before we begin with our video, we would like to make a small request. Kindly subscribe to our channel and like the video if it helps you and also share it with your friends who may benefit from the same. Hey guys, in this video I'll be showing how to simulate and design a phase shifted full bridge DC to DC converter. So um, I'm Sankarsh Dunga Prasad and uh, to begin with we'll show the design of the system and then if required and then um, if you only require the simulation you guys can skip ahead to the beginning part of the video so this is the circuit diagram you have the positive half cycle and the negative half cycle of the first converter that's the rectifier that converts dc to ac you have s3 and s1 when s3 and s1 are on it is in the posit positive half cycle while the S2 and S4 are off and then the opposite for the negative half cycle and then you have AC that's passing through the transformers and then you have you have a rectifier which converts DC AC to DC again and then goes to the load. You have capacitor and inductor as well for which we will uh, f show how to find the values for them. So to begin with um, consider the first rec converter that is the DC to AC converter and consider these um, pink and blue blocks to be the gating pulses of the switches and I mean for that time interval the switches are on basically. So when S2 and S, S1 and S3 is on and S2 and S4 are off you have the first output to the primary transformer and then when S2 and S4 are on and S2 and S1 and S3 are off you have the negative half cycle but there is a small overlap region between these two cycles wherein S1 is on and uh, S4 is on and this creates a short circuit so there's no voltage to the input of the primary of the transformer so you get zero output voltage. Now we, on, we know that um, when you pass AC voltage to a rectifier you get an average DC output which is the voltage across the load which I have simply represented as a straight line graph here. Now to design the um, phase shifted full bridge DC to DC converter we need to first take the input parameters. So our design input parameters is V input voltage is taken as 600 volts. We'll take the output voltage to be 12 volts. We'll take the power output required to be 480 volts. We'll take the input to the load current to be um, 40 amps and switching frequency to be 250 kilohertz. Let's consider the current ripple of maximum of 20% and voltage ripple of maximum of 1%. Now, see the thing is since we have so many converters, um, so many switches, there will be a voltage drop across the inductor and the switches. So we have to account this for this as well. So can we consider an output voltage of maximum of 15 volts, but the output voltage desired is 12 volts. Okay. So the turns ratio of the transformer is given by number of sides in the secondary divided by number of sides in the primary, which is equal to uh, output voltage by input voltage is equal to 0 0.025. And then you have the voltage of the inductor, which is equal to V input uh, divided by uh, NS by NP minus V output. And um, yeah, we, we, uh, the voltage across the inductor is also equal to L di by dt. So we, let's calculate the inductance value first. So L is equal to VL into dt by di, which is equal to VL into dts divided by I ripple. Now this I ripple can be seen in this small graph here on the top right hand side where you have the inductor current and you have the ripple current and dts is the time for which the, uh, it's the duty cycle is on and ts is the complete time. Okay, now we have the, um, so voltage across the inductor is equal to V input into NS by NP, which we've already calculated, which is 0 0.025. So you get 600 into 0 0.025 minus 12 volts, which is 3 volts. And then the duty cycle D is equal to 0 0.5 into V out divided by V max, which is equal to 0 0.4. So now the design of the phase shifted full bridge DC to DC converter, you have, um, I ripple, current ripple is 20% of the current of the load which is equal to 8 amps. So L is equal to VL into DTS divided by I ripple which is equal to 3 into 0 0.4 into 1 by 250K which is switching, switching frequency of 250 kilohertz and then I ripple is 8 we get 0 0.6 uh, micro Henry and uh, so now for the current in the capacitor IC is equal to C dV by DT and C is equal to I into DT by dV. I is equal to the current ripple divided in I is current ripple. So C is equal to I ripple into DTS divided by V ripple, which is equal to 8 into 0 0.4 into 1 in divided by 250K divided by 0 0.212. 
which is equal to 106.6666 microfarad. And now you have, this is the simple control for the whole system. We have voltage reference and you, which is compared with the output voltage always, goes to a PI converter, goes to a PWM block, uh, PWM code and you get the outputs. Okay, so now to begin with the simulation, we'll need a DC voltage source. We'll give the input voltage as we decided as um, 600 volts. And uh, now let's open the library browser to get the components. We'll take the MOSFET. So a MOSFET is going to be our switching device in this um, simulation. So press Control R, Command R if you're on the Mac, and you can rotate the blocks. And uh, yeah, so now make the connections between the MOSFETs. And now connect it to the DC voltage source. So now we'll also need a linear transformer. Um, the linear transformer is important is the isolator which isolates the two circuits and yeah so we'll have to double click on the linear transformer and uh, change the configuration untick the three winding transformer part of the linear transformer that time we'll get only a two winding transformer and uh, we'll have to uh, make it the units into SI units change the nominal power and the frequency so we had the switching frequency to be um, 25,000 kilo uh, 250,000 250 kilohertz basically right and the nominal power was supposed to be 480 watts um, so just put that in and uh, winding parameters you know, take 600 and set a really low resistance and inductance value as well so these shouldn't um, the winding the voltage values matter the inductance and resistance values do not really matter as long as they're really low so these are just the transform um, transformer ratings so again, the winding of the second phase should be 15 volts because as we anticipated, there would be a larger drop. There would be a drop somewhere else. So even if there is not a drop, the PID controller will control the output of the, um, uh, across the load. So you don't have to worry about that. So keep, keep it slight 20 to 30% as discussed in the design, keep it a bit higher. So 12 volts is what's desired. So we'll keep it at 15 volts as the output voltage, we like maximum output voltage possible. So set the magnetization and in, saying inductance and yeah, values. So now once this is done, we'll need diodes. So these diodes are important for us to make the rectifier. Yeah, so once this is done, just copy paste the diode three other times and uh, make the connections. So yeah, connect the diodes across each other. Go to the library browser. And um, so now we'll need a series RLC branch and not a load. So we will need the branch to set the values of the inductances and capacitances. So now you'll have to make it only an inductor and only a capacitor. Remember that we had um, previously selected only inductors. So for only inductors, make it um, 0 0.6 microfarad, micro Henry, and for capacitance is 106.6666 into 10 to the power of uh, minus 6 Henry. Sorry, farad. Farad for capacitance. Now we'll make it only a resistance. Um, so we know that uh, power is equal to um, V into I. V is equal to I into R. And we know that we know what the voltage is and we know what the current should be. So the resistance, we can just set it like that. So 12 by 40. 
So now once this is done, now we're going for the control part of the simulation. So the control is um, basically, you will need go-to tags to provide the switching pulses for each of the um, MOSFETs. So just copy paste the go-to tag for the times and name it as PWM1, PWM2, PWM3, and PWM4. So we avoid any confusion. Yeah, so now once this is done, um, we will need a, a voltage measurement block to measure the voltage of the output. This will be one of the inputs to our closed loop controller. So let, we'll set the reference voltage to 12 volts and um, we'll need a sum block. Um, we'll just delete this and get a sum block. It's the same block, but I like the sum block better. Um, yeah, so we'll get the reference block and we set the voltage as 12 volts reference and uh, make the minus plus minus sign. And now we'll need the PI controller. And once we have the PI controller, make it um, disk discrete time PI controller and set the proportionality no continuous no may I make it discrete time as well yeah we'll make it make the proportionality constant and um, integral values as I have made them here go to output of saturation set the upper limit to be 180 and the lower limit to be minus infinity and now um, what we'll need is a clock. So don't make it in a discrete block, keep it continuous. Um, what we need, a clock, we need it, the output to be um, restricted to 180 because um, we know that the frequency goes from zero to 180. And yeah, so now switching frequency, keep it as 250 Hertz and we need a clock as well. So now the input to the PWM uh, generator is the clock. We have the switching frequency and we have the PI controller as well. So now um, I've already written the code for the PI controller. We, you can just copy paste the code. You can, you can take a screenshot of it and you can copy and write down the code because it'll take too long to type the code in front of you. So once it's done, you have two outputs. PWM1 and PWM2. This does not correspond to PWM1 and 2 of the model. So just um, so now I'll show you now how to go about um, see, um, make uh, choosing where the switching pulses of the code go to. So for this, first we'll also need um, not gate blocks. You need go to blocks as well. So we'll just name it as PWM1. We'll name this as um, PWM2 or oh, four, my bad. Yeah. So we'll copy paste it and name it as PWM. We'll need a not get. So when PWM1 is switched, PWM2 is um, off. So this will be PWM2. And when PWM2 is switched, PWM4 is switched, PWM3 is um, off.
yeah so this is it for the control part so now what i'll do is i'll click on um, so yeah before this we'll also have to go to the model settings and uh, change the configuration of the um, solver to uh, trapezoidal ode 23t and uh, we also need a power gui block okay you can't find a power GUI block here so go to library browser type in gui and you'll get a power gui block yeah so now make this discrete and set it as one e power minus eight and now we can uh, run the simulation So as you can see, um, so let's look at the scope and let's look at the output. So the simulation is going really slow, so you can't really see any output right now. But if you zoom it in, you will be able to see 12 volts. One second, let me zoom it in again. Yeah, so as you can see, the voltage is at 12 volts. And um, like I mentioned earlier, you can't really see it unless you zoom it in. Yeah. So that's it for this video. Um, you can also try playing around with the voltage reference. You can keep it at 5 volts. Um, the expected output would be, it wouldn't be close to 5 volts because it's not designed for 5 volts. But if you change it to somewhere around 12 volts, um, it would be much more accurate. So you can try it with uh, 10 volts and see it. You'll find the output to be a bit more accurate. Yeah, so there you go. It's a bit more accurate now. Um, so yeah, that's it for this, for this video. Kindly like the video if it helped you subscribe to our channel and uh, we'll see you soon thank you